So we're live on YouTube now. But council in or just for everyone? Um, you can let in everyone. Good morning, Attorney Kroninsky. Good morning. Rano, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Join with computer and audio. Choose one. What do I have to do? Choose. Um, there you okay. go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Leah. Now calling 17 miscellaneous 000680 James B. Morose versus Karen A. Fitch. Um, let me swear in a court reporter, Pam. You solemnly swear or affirm that you will truly and faithfully transcribe and set down the testimony and evidence in this proceeding to the best I, of your ability. I do. Counsel, will you identify yourselves, please? Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Kornitsky for the plaintiffs, James and Janet Morose. Good morning, Your Honor. Robert Scarano for Karen and Paul Fitch defendants. Okay. I'm going to ask the parties who are here to uh, mute themselves and turn off their cameras, please. Um, Attorney Kornitsky, are you ready for trial? Ready for trial, Your Honor. Um, Attorney Scarano, are you ready for trial? Ready for trial, Your Honor. All right. So we're plaintiffs going first, right? And then the defendant? Yes, Your Honor. Am I remembering that correctly? We'll, um, we'll do opening statements, which I welcome. And then we'll go until 11 or so, do a morning break, break a little before one for lunch, pick it up at two breaks sometime at three or so in the afternoon, finish at four, pick it up again tomorrow at 9.30. We do have two days for trial. Um, you anticipate using those full two days? I don't know if I can go by the exhibits. That's so you've got a lot of exhibits. I, I, that, um, I don't plan on touching most of those exhibits. Um, okay. I, I expect I will wrap up um, today I, for all the testimony I have on direct, I would say less than two and a half hours. Okay. What do you think, Attorney Scarano? I know that the one witness I have um, will be testifying first thing tomorrow morning, Mr. Bingle. He's not available today. Mm -hmm. um, Karen Fitch and Paul Fitch are available today if we have the time to um, get some of their direct testimony in and some cross-examination. I suspect the uh, engineer and surveyor I have would be available. Uh, and their, their testimony is fairly short and direct, uh, and I don't expect it uh, to eat up the whole day tomorrow, Your Honor. Okay. Well, good. So um, I understand I think that's exhibit three. Well, first of all, let me take care of the exhibits. You have agreed exhibits 1A and 1 through 110, is that correct? Correct, Your Honor. Attorney Scarano, is that correct? I'm just looking, Your Honor, I have 109. So if there was one added, it must be Mayan. No. Um, the, the one, uh, Mr. Scarano, it was the D to 1517 Florence to Fitch yesterday afternoon. I will, I will probably say that that may be a duplicate because it, it is contained in the summary judgment record, which could be referenced. Um, no, but, no, Your Honor, no, it's, no, I'm not referencing the summary judgment record. You got to okay. the trial. Um, I don't have a problem um, with the deed for 15 and 17 Florence Street as number 110. Okay, exhibits 1A and 1 through 110 are admitted. I did hear, I did hear um, you, um, Your Honor, as to 110 in the summary judgment um, 
exhibits the copy of the verified and the um, amended complaint are in those exhibits. Uh, they're not in the exhibits proper. I can reference the amended, the complaints are pleadings. You can reference them at any time. Okay, and I, but if someone needed to see them, that's what I meant. They were in the summary judgment record. But is that uploaded on share file? Is that it a, is, Your Honor. Well, okay. Oh, it's my, a contested exhibit, the full summary judgment. Oh, all right. Yes. Well, we'll get to that. So I want to go back to exhibit three. And yes, Your Honor. It's... Exhibit three is entitled Shaded Area No Longer in Dispute. And um, as I look at this plan, I see three different shaded areas. So I'm not clear uh, what that's referring to and I need to know what's in dispute and what's not in dispute at this time. Let me just see if I can uh, bring up that exhibit. And of course, it's just spinning. No, no, it takes us a few seconds to get these images up. It takes a little longer than the documents. Appreciate that. Bob, you can look in the Ignite file too. It's, the same way. it's just simply spinning here. And I mentioned this yesterday, Mark, it kicks me out. I'm gonna give it two seconds, if I may excuse myself, Your Honor. Yeah. No, I want you to bring up the exhibits on my computer screen because If it's an issue, I can uh, share. I have it up on my okay. computer. All right. Um, Clerk Marino, does um, the court porter have sharing privileges? Is that it? She does. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Pam is sharing it. Oh, good. It's right side up. Um, so my question to you, gentlemen, is you've got three shaded areas. I forget, and I see the hard um, property line, and I forget which side is Morosa's property and which side is the pitch property that has that is being claimed for adverse possession. Attorney Scarano, you you are muted. The left side bottom of the exhibit is the morose side. The okay. top, top side green is the Fitch side. So I know that the issue is where there was a garage that was over the line, right? That's correct. And that's shown there. And that's shown. So I'm going to describe the colors from the top to the bottom as green, pink, and then yellow. All right. I know that they're probably not what their real names are, but that's how I look at them. So the yellow part is on the morose property, correct? Correct. And then the pink part in the middle is on the Fitch property. And then the green part's also on the Fitch property, correct? Correct, Your Honor. So what is the shaded area that's no longer in dispute? Is that the pink? Pink and yellow. Pink and yellow are not in dispute about 
So you all agree that the morosis have title to the pink area surrounding that garage? And for the purposes of the trial, Your Honor, judgment would enter for morose on the pink and okay. yellow area. Okay, great. So we're going to try about adverse use of the green area. Is that, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And okay. I would note that there's a reference to a gate that straddles the pink and green area. So mm -hmm. between the pink and green area, mm -hmm. there'll be testimony about a gate that allows access between the two. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I remember that fence and gate from the view. Yeah. Okay. And I see it's on the, uh, on the plan. Okay, so Attorney Kornitsky, is that all correct? Uh, yeah, you have one, one point, um, Your Honor, when Attorney Scarano and I spoke um, earlier about this on to the rear of the morose property, the shading goes a bit over the fenced in backyard. I see that, yes. And I understand that what has been stipulated is along the fence line. So if it extends, it, 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 the, the the stipulation would be just along uh, the fence line. All right, so the, the little bit of pink that's um, above the fence as we're looking at this plan is is not stipulated to. Right, um, right, we're putting color within the lines. The area enclosed by the fence and then also that jogs around the garage, even though there's no fence there. It's Correct. Like a, but at five feet or 50, no, it's five. It's five feet, Your Honor. Yeah, five feet around the garage. That's, yeah, that's a hashtag for the overhang of the soffit on okay. the garage. All right. The, do the dotted line. Right. But, um, but uh, there's a pink area around the garage that extends beyond the edge of the garage. And that's been stipulated to correct judgment will enter for the moroses with respect to that area. Is that correct? It will, it will Your Honor. That's five feet in each okay. direction around the garage. Okay. All right. So we're, we're trying just that green area. We are, Your Honor. Okay. Great. I would mention one other thing, Your Honor. There is a easement for sewer purposes that goes across this parcel mm -hmm. and it extends almost on the same direction as the line out front at Hardy Street, which is all the way to the right of the plan. Mm -hmm. There's a 25 foot easement that extends across that portion of the Welch Stickney lot now owned by Fitch. Yeah. And while we're trying that green area, some of it is subject to that easement, Your Honor. No one's seeking to extinguish that easement, are they? That's the point. We can't extinguish the easement because it is the major sewer line that connects under Route 128 um, that services that half of Danvers gravity to the other side of 128. No, I suspect I'm not going to seek to extinguish a sewer easement for that serves half of Danvers. That's that was my point. Um, there'll be one plan that shows up in I think in in the in the exhibits, whether agreed or disputed, that indicates that that's a 25 foot easement, and it was attendant with two 10 foot construction easements on each side. Um, so like I think we said, we won't be touching anything as it relates to the easement as extinguished. All right, Attorney Kornitsky, you agree? No one's seeking to extinguish the sewer easement? Agreed, Your Honor. Okay, Pam, you can take that off the screen. Um, Your Honor, I would um, refer to this in my opening. So I might ask that it be put back up. Okay, I mean, if you, you can share it too. I mean, okay. if you're able to. I, I can share from, I, I've made a duplicate copy of all of the exhibits in the program I use called Ignite. I've shared it with Attorney Scarano 
and we've shared it with the witnesses. So everybody will be able to share their screen through that as well. That's fine. I'm, I prefer the attorneys to sort of share the screen when they need to share it just so that they can control it. They can use their cursor to point the things and we don't, it just saves a step of having to ask someone else to put it up and then directing people to things, okay? But if you have a problem, let us know and we'll find another way to do it. Um, so I wanna note for the record that the court took a view in the subject properties on October 23rd, 2020. Um, I don't think there were any objections at that time. Are there any objections at this time to the view? No objections, Your Honor. I have no objections to the view, Your Honor. Of course, the gate was open at that time. I don't think you saw it closed. Um, I would bring that to your attention, that there are photographs that are going to be shown of it being closed. Okay. Um, are there any other... Evidentiary issues you want to raise? None from the plaintiff's side, Your Honor. Evidentiary issues, Your Honor, um, from a standpoint of the pleadings, we have two plans that have been prepared by Michael Giuliano, who's expected to testify. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, no plan is attached to either the first complaint or the amended complaint. Yeah. So right. from a technical standpoint, they're not attached to the pleadings. Okay. And, and they're being first referenced here as, a, as exhibit one that's going to be an agreed exhibit. It is an agreed exhibit. It was, it's been admitted. That's correct, Your Honor. So I just wanted to make that clarification. It's not attached to the pleadings. Never has been. I'm not really that concerned about the pleadings at this point. We're now trying the case. So I'll be looking at the evidence that's here. I appreciate that distinction. Okay. Your Honor, just so I could, I, I, I don't know that I need to address it, but I, I handed that plan that's exhibit one at a status conference we had in February when I filed my first amended complaint. So I filed it in court, but in any event, it is an exhibit. That it may or may not have been attached to an exhibit or made or in pleading or made part of the pleading is at this point utterly irrelevant. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, I'll let you make opening statements. We'll start. Remember when you object, stick your hand up and say objection, okay? Um, and um, if we have to go to sidebar, we will by going into a breakout room. Uh, I don't see mute. And um, so uh, for you as attorneys, I don't think you should mute yourself at all during okay. the call. You're not going to be able to object in time if you have to unmute yourself before you object. So as long as you're not making noise in the background, you're fine. Everyone else should stay muted though. And then, you know, for those witnesses that aren't parties who are sitting there watching, um, you should let them know that when they're ready to testify so they can get into the, they can get into the uh, waiting room and we'll admit them and uh, do it. So, and I note this is also being live streamed on, it's being recorded, got a court report, it's being recorded on Zoom, on FTR, I mean, or audio recording, and it's being live streamed on YouTube, where we'll see it forever, I assume. I did have one question as to the cursor, Your Honor, and, and the witnesses being able to use a cursor. Is that controlled through? That's the gonna be hard for the witnesses, because they're not, the only person who can use the cursor is the person sharing the screen. So you're going to have to really direct the witnesses with your cursor. Your Honor, if I may, yeah. the, um, uh, the shared file I used would permit 
that particular witness. Oh, that's great. To open the document, share their screen and use their cursor. Okay, good. If they can do that, that's great. All right, I think that's it. Um, All right, um, anything else you wanna raise before we get started? Nothing further, Your Honor. Um, okay, so uh, Attorney Kornitsky, you may make your opening statement. Okay, so I just asked that I be able to share my screen. Sure. Um, Okay. okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, today you will hear from James and Janet Morose about their adverse possession of the disputed adverse possession area. Uh, you will hear and see the actions taken by the Moroses since 1973 when they uh, moved to this property uh, to perfect their claim. As in many adverse possession cases, the use of the land differs in the various parts of the um, the adverse possession, the alleged adverse possession area. Um, Morose did not learn of the garage encroachment until approximately 1999. You'll have testimony of that, well after 20 years of occupancy beginning in 1973. Having a perfected adverse possession case in their minds, you will hear testimony and the evidence will show that they continue to use the property, property openly, adversely, and exclusively. And it was not until 2015 that uh, Fitch, Claire cut the land in this area without any notice to Morose and this action for adverse possession followed. So I just wanted to direct you to exhibit one on my screen. And first, this area in the back. No, I, don't, I don't see exhibit one, I see a I, maybe you need to maximize the thing there. Oh, you don't see the, um, the I see that. I see uh, like a, a um, I see your search engine and two tabs, cloud file server and post attendee zoom, but I don't see the exhibit. It's just a band. I don't know, maybe you need to maximize it. Uh, it's, it's full on my screen. It tells me I am screen sharing. It's not on mine, but you see, you say it's exhibit one. Right. I, I just like to take a minute to see if I can. Um, let me ask attorney uh, Scarano, if I may, if you can see my screen, the exhibit one. I see the same thing as, as um, Judge Foster. All right. Why don't we go off the record briefly while you try to fix this, Attorney Kornitsky. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's better. Now I see it. Okay, okay we can go back on. Hold on a second. Thanks. Okay. All right, you may proceed. I can see the exhibit. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so the where I'm, I'm pointing now, you'll hear evidence about this 14 square foot area um, at the rear of the Morose property. And you will hear that Mr. Morose uh, constructed and installed sections of fence here in 1976 when he installed a pool, which you'll see, which is still located in the same area to the rear of its home. This area has been used exclusively since 1976, if not before it was fenced in. And you will hear and see evidence of repairs that were made to that section of the fence you will see the original fence that he installed and the current fence that has been attached to the prior installed fence. So there's a, a taller fence you'll see that was attached to the shorter fence. Morose will testify that he's used this, that they have used this area without permission exclusively since 1976. Uh, one area that you will hear about that I'll break Oh, this is the Morose driveway in front of their garage. 
the area adjacent to it is in dispute. Um, you will hear that the use um, of this area did change by Morose over time. You will hear testimony from both Mr. and Mrs. Morose that this area has been maintained by them. They cut back the vegetation regularly. They installed and maintained the lawn. The driveway was narrow and just stepping out of the passenger door of an automobile required going on to that grass area. You will see a basketball goal that was installed out towards the street outside of the adverse possession area, but the lawn was cleared regularly around it and maintained so that um, and when a ball went there, it wouldn't go into um, overgrown shrubbery. Um, you'll see photos from the adverse possession area into this area here that you'll be referred to as the field. And a path was maintained uh, between the adverse possession area and the field. And down this way is where the Porter River is. You'll hear testimony of the Moroses maintenance of this area so that they could preserve views from their house down to the Porter River. The evidence will disprove defendants challenge to the frontage in this area, which is shown by a steep angle uh, in that stipulated um, exhibit three um, plan at, at Hardy Street. So you, you saw the exhibit three, which shows a five foot area around the garage. The disputed area heading towards the field is an additional 4.89 feet. And you will hear testimony um, involving um, Mr. Morose cutting down a tree. And there's a stump that you'll see located on that exhibit three plan and also on uh, contested pool that show the location of the tree stump in that 4.89 square foot area. You'll hear testimony um, regarding conversation between Mr. Morose and Mr. Fitch involving the removal of that tree and it being taken down um, and, and cut so that it landed and was on the, in the field for a week. And there'll be some disputed testimony about um, the conversation concerning the cutting down of that tree and the removal of the wood. You will see photographs of that tree when it was cut down in the field um, in the approximately 2004. Another area that you will um, hear testimony about that will be um, at issue is the gate. You can see the gate located on this exhibit one plan and the gate swing, it is a large gate. It's five and a quarter feet. Um, and it opens beyond the, um, the plan area shown as the area that is claimed by Morose. Morose would amend their claim to include all of that gate swing. The gate, you will hear testimony that the gate swing has been that way since the fence was installed in that location. And you'll hear testimony that James Morose replaced an existing, a, a pre existing white picket fence here with the current fence that is there, which he has continued to maintain. Um, and he located the gate in the exact same location as the white picket fence gate. You'll see photos over time of this fence and the gate um, during um, the time of the claim. And it's Morose's position that by the mid nineties, they had perfected their adverse possession claim in this area. They maintained the fence from either side. They used the gate swing and you'll hear testimony about uh, a path within um, this area on the other side of the fence that was used and maintained by Morose. You'll see photographs of Janet Morose standing in the path 
performing maintenance. Um, you'll hear the evidence will show that in 1999, Ditch's predecessor in title uh, filed uh, an A&R plan that was approved and recorded. That is exhibit 15. And the A&R plan showed the encroachment of the garage. I'm sorry, when was the A&R plan filed? 1999 is when it was recorded. It's a 1998 plan. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, despite the predecessor uh, having knowledge of the encroachment, there was no attempt to eject Morose from this area. Um, you'll hear testimony regarding the 2000 ZBA meeting concerning 15 to 17 Florence Street. So 15 to 17 Florence Street is the Fitch property that fronts on Florence Street, which is over here, where my cursor is to the, the left of the screen. And there was uh, there is a structure which we went in at the view, and the evidence will show that uh, Fitch's predecessor, Dr. Breed, operated a, uh, a, his medical practice. A, uh, he was an eye doctor, and he operated that there. Uh, then Fitch operated a business here, and 15 to 17 extends down around to the Porter River, and what the evidence will show is there is a separate lot created by that ANR plan. And uh, this area, the larger area is, we'll hear it referred to as the Welcher Stickney lot. So Fitch's predecessor actually brought an adverse possession claim for that Welcher Stickney lot. And that complaint, which did not include Morose, the Morose You'll hear their testimony and there's, there'll be no evidence that they received any notice of the land court action, sought adverse possession, um, and there was no attempt to notify them, even though the plans filed in the land court at that time showed the encroachment. Uh, the judgment was, is dated August 5th, 2004, and um, Fitch's immediate predecessor in title, Claudio Gabriel, um, by his action did not alter any of Morose's claim. The judgment provided that it enter and established uh, property rights only between the parties to the case. The evidence will also show that in 2012, Morose engaged an attorney, Sally Calhoun, and attempted to um, purchase the Welcher Stickney lot. The Welcher Stickney lot includes the adverse possession area. And it will, you will hear the evidence, uh, you will hear testimony that will show that Morose not only sought to extinguish any dispute about the adverse possession area by buying the entire Welcher Stickney lot, but that they look to buy the entire lot to increase the square footage of their land and own all the land down or more of this land. Um, in as part of their property. You will see um, evidence of a conservation commission plan filed by Fitch in 2012, around the same time as those negotiations and an area of land that was described as, um, as being transferred to Morose in 2012. Um, lastly, you'll hear evidence about the 2015 action, which is well after the 1973 um, time frame that Morose moved to the property in which Fitch clear cut all of this land right up to the garage. And you'll see photographs of that as well. And, and that is essentially uh, the evidence uh, that we expect to, to prove at trial, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Attorney Scarano. Thank so, you, Your Honor. You want that plan up there? Or you, you, can... you can leave that plan up there. My brother did a great job with the cursor. Mm -hmm. And 
today, Your Honor, we have two distinct parcels of land. We have the morose backyard, which is basically a suburban backyard. And the character of that land has a pool, graded flat, a lawn, a garden. On the other side of the fence, Your Honor, you'll hear testimony from most of the witnesses testifying on behalf of Fitch and Fitch that that area was a wild area with overgrown trees, brambles, bushes, sometimes impassable. And you will also hear that it was maintained by Fitch's predecessor in the wild state. So it was intentionally maintained to provide a buffer between Morose and the commercial use on the breed property, who is Fitch's predecessor, along with Gabrielli. That area with the building of Fitch, formerly breed, an optometrist, first one to do surgery in Massachusetts in a private building, eye surgery, was a state-of-the-art complex that was built federally standardized and it had to pass rigorous rigorous standards. It was the first one actually, I think in the country that passed those standards for a private eye surgery center. You'll hear testimony from <laughs> Mr. Bingle, who was Dr. Breed's son-in-law as to the maintaining of that wild area as accommodation for his security as well as the security of the neighborhood. And I suspect Morose, who will be included in the neighborhood. So the character of the land is going to be an issue as it relates to Morose's entry and the notes on the plan, which basically are related to maintenance. Fitch will testify as to his occupation and his treatment of this area. And he will testify that the area is and was similar in nature to the area on the right of way where the pavement ended on Hardy Street. It was overgrown, heavily treed, and consisted of um, plants that generally grow near the coast in brackish and saltwater environments, um, as well as the uh, native plants there too. Fitch will testify that he went through a process with DEP and the Local Conservation Commission. And as you are aware, that those proceedings are rigorous as to the identification of plants, soils, and other topography um, that was included in his redevelopment of this property. But what I don't think you're going to see, Your Honor, is significant improvements actual structures, erection of anything, dominion and control supporting the morose claim. What the evidence will tend to show is that they made forays through a gate into this area and some of the pitches that my brother talked about, collecting flowers, cutting um, some of the natural growth in there um, in this type of area does not lead to the inference or conclusion that the area was under their direct dominion and control. As a matter of fact, they would enter through the gate and when they were done with what they were doing, they would leave to the gate and go back to the other side of the fence to the area they actually did have dominion and control over. 
So one of the issues will be the character, the land, and the and the improvements on made on it as it relates to the character of the of the land. Um, the other big issue here, Your Honor, is is that there's a sketch in front of us. This is a sketch. It it was a plan that I think had a stamp on it at one time because it says it's a survey. You would have to reduce it down to see the actual um, details on the right side of the plan. And what you're going to hear is that this actual sketch was prepared by Mr. Giuliano at a time after the complaint was filed and after the complaint was verified. And Giuliano went out by himself. He was not attended by the plaintiffs. They gave him instructions. Go out, see what you can locate, bring me back a plan. Two attempts were made at this plan, one on December 12th, one on December 18th, six days apart. The plans are significantly different in the amount of area that they claim. From December 12th through December 18th, the plan was amended to claim an additional 208 square feet thereabout. It changed the entire area at the left-hand boundary towards the gate to make accommodations for what Attorney Koninsky indicated would be an amendment. The amendment took place back in December of 2017 on two attempts. And as you notice on the right-hand side, the first attempt isn't even shown on this document. There's no revision dates. The document is simply void of all these other efforts. But you'll hear the testimony from um, uh, uh, Mr. Giuliano and from the plaintiffs regarding that attempt to expand the adverse possession area in 2017 by plan. If we could bring the whole document back, um, the view we had of the area, thank you. You'll also hear Mr. Bingle talk about the excavation that took place because of the sewer easement and the extensive pipe that was placed and jacked under Route 128 and how everything at the corner of that garage that was within the 10 foot construction easement was wiped out. That area was wiped out before the Morosa's alleged ripening of an adverse possession claim. It was completely regraded. The area hardly reflects what it did before the easement was actually utilized by the state and town of Danvers. Significant changes occurred on that corner. There'll be photographs of that. It'll be photographs with the original vegetation that was wiped out. It's part of the exhibits, be introduced by one of the witnesses. So for four, nearly four years now, the Morosas have been pressing their claim from 2017, even though my brother would say that it ripened some 20 years after the date he bought the property, which was January of 74, not 73. So he bought the property in 74. There's an exhibit to that effect. It's not 73. And during that time period, during that period, as I indicated, the buffer was maintained by Breed and then Fitch came to the property in 2000. He too utilized that area. He mowed it. His children mowed it. His landscapers mowed it. And that brings me to the fact that 
Mr. Morose and Mrs. Morose never had exclusive possession of anything shown in green. They will raise that defense and there is evidence that supports that contention and determination because his admissions by Mr. Morose that he did not have exclusive possession of it. The admission is in writing. It was submitted in a quasi judicial proceeding to influence the Conservation Commission and it's entitled his organic observations. It's a direct admission that there was no exclusivity. I know my brother talked about office to purchase sent by Sally Calhoun, who is a partner of the Konitsky for firm or was. And so this firm has a long relationship with the Moroses and Sally Calhoun sent multiple requests acknowledging and recognizing the authority of Fitch. On each occasion, they recognized the authority of Fitch to either purchase it, enter upon it. And this recognition of authority can't be explained away that they want to extinguish a claim because that recognition include no notice of a claim. As a matter of fact, there's a declaration against interest in there that says we don't know who owns it, meaning themselves as well. So at the time these went out, there was an issue as to that declaration against interest and obviously looking to the authority of Morose. You'll also hear the Fitches testify that they had a pretty good relationship with the Moroses. The Moroses were on their property on a yearly basis, invited to the property to watch the fireworks. The whole neighborhood came. You'll hear testimony of how the whole neighborhood got to the edge of the water to watch the fireworks, including the Moroses. And while they were there, they never made any notice of any area that they were claiming. As a matter of fact, they came across the area, the path, the very path that they say they maintained exclusively was used by everybody. You'll hear testimony it was used by the paper boy, the mailman, neighbors, the Moroses, the Fitches. So exclusivity is a big issue regarding this area. And you will hear most of the parties talk and testify about that. The other issue here is the defense of permissive use. I know Attorney Konitsky mentioned that you know, Morose would like to go on the property. But that's where it ends, Your Honor. Subjective intent is not relevant in any adverse possession proceeding. And subjective intent for entry certainly isn't relevant. So any excuse of why it's not permissive would be an extension of that subjective intent and we would be objecting to any use of it because he asked to enter the green area. He sought permission by going to Fitch's building, seeking him out, asking for permission and received permission to enter the property. So as it relates to the many disputes over the green area, um, there'll be exhibits depicting many photographs as you mentioned, Your Honor, but a lot of them are post-complaint. So from basically the date of the verification, November 7, 2017 on, all of those other photographs would be related to improvements made by Morose after the filing of the complaint. Of course, there are several photographs before the filing of the complaint that would be um, brought in by my witnesses, as well as I'm sure Attorney Konitsky's witnesses. In conclusion, quickly, Your Honor, the admissible evidence will not assist the court in clarifying this disputed area in favor of Morose. You will find that the area was permissive. 
It was non-exclusive. Those two elements alone are enough to uh, involuntarily dismiss his complaint. The aerials that will be shown will be no help to the court on the disputed area. The photographs, many of them are conveniently staged in order to make a point. We'll point that out. Um, but nothing in the family photographs will be helpful in making this determination. The land from the garage down to the river, written statement, non-exclusive. Miscible evidence will point to many of these authorities that Morose recognized through his attorneys, not himself, although he did that, but through his attorneys without making a claim until 2017. He made no claim that he will be able to point to from 1974 right up until the date of the filing of the claim. He put no one on notice. He would like to utilize this plan as notice, maybe notice of an encroachment, Your Honor, but it's not notice of a claim. With that, I'll allow Attorney Kaninsky to take the floor and I'll turn it back over to you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, so, Attorney Kaninsky, you want to take that plan down, please? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I just wanted to mention one thing, if I may. Um, the, I didn't want to object during the opening, but the uh, statement about Sally Calhoun being my former partner is, uh, is not correct. She's a tenant of a real estate trust to which I am a trustee. I've never had a professional uh, business relationship with attorney Calhoun. I would okay. draw that portion of my statement. Um, thank you for the correction. All right, thank you. Um, so I, Your Honor, I would call James Morose. All right, I want you to stop the sharing for now because I need this to This was the first uh, exhibit I was going to put up. Um, uh, if, you, if you'd like, I can. I can stop the share and just go right back to it. Um, all right. I can pause the share. We'll pause it or I want to see everyone on the full screen for the moment. Um, Is it down now, Your Honor? No. Oh, it should be. <laughs> um, Back to um, the Zoom share and stop share. All right, thank you. Um, so, Ms. James Morose, you said? Uh, Mr. Morose, if you're there, unmute yourself and get your. There you are. Present. Okay. Um, swear the witness, please. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Can you state your name, please? James Morose. Mr. Morose, are you alone in the room you're in? Yes, sir. And do you have any materials in front of you besides the exhibits that relate no, to this? Sir. Okay. You may proceed, Attorney Kornitsky. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Morose, uh, where do you live? I live on uh, 20 Hardy Street, Danvers. With whom do you live? Uh, my wife, Janet. And um, what do you do for work? I'm a configuration manager at uh, uh, British Aeronautical Engineering. How long have you worked there? Uh, three years. What is a, what is a configuration manager? Uh, I, I work with the engineers and uh, verify the documentation, all the revs are correct to make sure that uh, what, what we're building is uh, built to the correct uh, documentation and uh, drawings. Okay, thank you. How long have you lived at 20 Hardy Street? Uh, since 1973, uh, that would be yeah, 40 some odd years, 47. And did you move to the property before you took title to the property? I did. I did. In, in 1973, uh, the legal age to contract was 21, and uh, we weren't 21 at the time. So we rented the uh, unit, the house, for uh, two months, and then we bought it the first business day in 1974 when they lowered the legal age to contract to 18. When you say we, who is we? Uh, Janet, my wife and I. Uh, so when were you and Janet married? 
1971. Can you describe uh, improvements located on your property when you moved there? Yes, when we moved in, it was pretty much like the drawing you had up. We had the uh, the house uh, as the main, uh, you know, the house footprint has changed, hasn't has remained the same, except we added a dormer. We got the garage off to the uh, riverside and uh, uh, behind the garage, there was a white picket fence the rear lot line, there was another fence halfway. And the other side lot where there was half chain link, half picket fence, and another driveway over there. Okay, we'll, we'll go over those areas in, in just a moment. Your Honor, may I share my screen? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Moros, can you see my screen? Yes. I'm showing you exhibit one. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And is this this is where the location of your, your the, the structure was in 1973 when you moved to the property? Yes. Same footprint? Yes. And this location here is where your garage was located in 1973? Yes. Same footprint? Yes. And um, do you so what is this exhibit one plan? This is a plan uh, uh, we uh, hired Mike Giuliano to uh, identify and, and depict in engineering drawings the uh, area that we used uh, since we uh, moved in. The adverse possession area. And so you describe the area to Mr. Giuliano that you wanted him to depict on the plan? Is that what you're stating? Yes, yes. We, uh, as Mr. Scarano pointed out, we didn't walk the field with him. We, uh, I, I contacted him on the phone, told him that, you know, you've been there before. Oh, I just lost everything. I, I can still see you, Jim. You oh, okay, I can't see anything. Okay, I'll, I'll continue. I, uh, uh, so I, I contacted Mr. Giuliano and verbally on the phone, I told him, you know, you've been there, you know what we've talked about. There's a path alongside the garage that goes all the way back to the rear of the property. It kind of follows the tree line, but it's, you know, it's like eight to nine feet by the garage. And as you go further down to where the, the gate is, it goes down to about five or six, and then it kind of tapers down because there's a second set of tree line back. There's two tree lines. And uh, so that's what I, the instructions I gave him. Um, Mr. Moros, can you see my screen now or not? I cannot, no. Um, I have no idea what happened. But you can, can you see? Um, Am I the only one having technical difficulties? Let me ask uh, Judge Foster if he can. I can see, I can see what you're sharing, counsel. Hmm. If you just move something, maybe your mouse or something, maybe you've kind of gone to sleep. I'm not sure though. Yeah. Just I, a I, suggestion. Oh, yes. I, okay, I hit the escape button and the lights are on. Yeah. Very good, very good. I'm gonna show you um, what's been marked. I, Your Honor, I have a, a chart that's been marked for identification. I was gonna put up on the screen next. Okay. Is this um, one of the contested exhibits? Contested exhibit. And which one is that? It's, it's, it has six O's. Six O's, okay. Uh, uh, I see it, okay. Mark it as chalk with six O's, and I, I, it's the only chalk that I've, I've marked. Okay. I also refer to it as O's as requested by the court with a, a number one as well. Um, Mr. Moros, I'm showing you this, uh, this contested exhibit uh, chalk. Would this be helpful in explaining your testimony? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. I would just 
ask that he lay a proper foundation to the document rather than it being helpful for testimony. Well, I think you should probably continue more about what Council, I assume you're going to continue more about the source of all the little colors and letters and things on here. Yes. Your and Honor. who put them on there and all that good stuff. Thank uh, you, Alan. Mr. Morose. But I think, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Council. Sorry. Mr. Morose, so the, the, um, the document without any of the added highlights and numbers, is this the... Um, what's been marked as exhibit number one with those additions? Yes. And these uh, written additions and colors, did you um, prepare that in anticipation of your testimony today? Yes. And did you prepare it to show different areas of fencing around the property? Yes. And it would be helpful to explain your testimony for those particular areas? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that I be able to use chart zero, six zeros. Attorney Scarano, any objection? I have no objection, Your Honor. All right, so you know what, we're gonna, there's all these things with letters. We're gonna call this chalk number one, identify it in the record as chalk number one. At some point, we'll move it into, We'll rename it, leave it in the sort of contested exhibit area, but rename it formally as chalk number one. The, the name does actually have chalk number one as part I know, of it. but I want it to be at the front rather than contested exhibit triple or six zero. Okay. But that's just for the record, so it'll be clear to me. But we don't have to do that now. Take care of that during a break. You may proceed. This is chalk number one. Okay, hey, um, so Mr. Morose, I have the, um, the, the cursor. So um, I'm gonna point to a first, um, what has been labeled as A, and I'm gonna make this a little larger. So A is in the highlighted yellow. Can you describe um, what A shows? Yes, A is, is, the, is the current fence that's, that's there that goes from the garage to the rear lot line uh, when I moved in to the property, it was uh, a white picket fence and uh, it was in pretty disrepair. So I, I pretty much took it down and uh, put up another fence in the same spot. I used pretty much the same uh, fence post holes, the fence post holes, and just uh, custom made a fence. I just bought some two by fours and some wood and just slapped it in and put a gate right where the other gate was there was a gate in the original fence and uh that's pretty much what section a is and when did you uh replace the white picket fence what year was that probably in the uh summer to spring uh fall of uh, 1975. is the fence that is currently in this location a uh, the same fence? It's the same fence with a lot of uh, repairs and maintenance, yes. Uh, and when you say you use the same um, holes from the white picket fence, how did you reuse those holes? Well, when, when I took out the old fence, there was hole uh, in the post, there was holes there. I just uh, dug them out a little deeper. I had some scrap iron pipes, so I just put them in there and then I concreted them in, same holes, less work. Um, directing your attention to what has been shown on chalk number one as section B in pink. Can you tell me about that? Yes, that fence, there was no fence there when I moved in. Uh, what basically, uh, after I put the pool in in 76, uh, I thought I should close it off the yard, so I ran. I I built that fence from scratch from the corner of Section A, right into the bushes and up against. Uh, Doctor Breed had a fence, a uh, a stockade fence labeled C right there, and I, I butted right up to that. 
1976. And it was the same type fence, custom made two by fours with uh, ledger board pickets, one by eight pickets. Is the height of the fence that you initially constructed at that time the same as section A? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, originally they were four foot high and uh, at some point in time, I don't remember when, probably in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, I, uh, I added six foot pickets to that to uh, uh, because I put another, I put section fence D up and E in uh, 18 and 1989. So yeah, then I, when I, by the time I got section D done down to E with a six foot dog eared pickets, I, 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 I just ran that fence to uh, section B. Well, let, let me just, I just want to break it down just a little bit when you say they, I just okay. want to, or when you first installed, you, you said it was in 1976 when you installed the pool that you put section B in initially. It was Correct. Before. You said it was four feet high. Was that the same height or different than section A's height? Same height. And then in, you said it was in the, it was later described as, a, um, well, maybe I should ask again because I'm not clear when you, or when you installed the higher pieces to this fence that you described, how did you do that? Correct, yeah, when, when I put those pieces on, so, the four foot pickets were actually on the rails facing. And, and so the, the, the finished side was, was facing the, the breed side and, and the rail was on my side. So when I put the taller pickets on, I didn't even bother with the four foot pickets. I just left them there and I put the taller pickets on the back side. Uh, so there was a double layer of fence there. Now, is, is the original fence that you installed um, in 1976 still there? Yes, it is. And, it's, and where is it in, in, in relation to your, your home? It's, it's on the rear property line. Is it on the front side of the taller pieces or on the, the back side of the taller pieces? I, I the original fence is behind the taller pieces, right? Thank you. Okay. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going, pointing your attention to section C of the fence or section C, I should say on this sketch. Can you tell me what section C is? Yeah, section C would be the existing, uh, Dr. Breed had a stockade fence there when I moved in. And it ran along his, you know, a little bit off his parking lot and, it, and it's up against the bushes. And so that fence was there when you moved to the property in 1973? Correct. Is it still there? Yes. And is it, uh, what is its current condition? It's pretty uh, dilapidated. There's it, not much of it is left standing. It's kind of laying there. Um, and what is, um, we started to talk about this part labeled D. What does D show? Yeah, right. Section D, yeah. On around 1989, again, you know, with the uh, the, the breed fence and, and disrepair, you could really like see through the bushes into the parking lot and anyone could walk through the fence and, you know, the breed fence and through the bushes and into our yard. So I, I put up a fence from the uh, Section D from my other side lot fence all the way down to uh, the, uh, well, where it is there, almost 10, 15 feet from, from the end on the same track as the, uh, the breed fence. And then section E, which you're pointing to, I went around the corner and just completed section E up against uh, and connected to my section uh, B. And when did you do that? In 1989. Now, in this area between D and C that I'm pointing to, 
Yes. What is located there? there that's a, there's trees and bushes in a, in a line between both the fences. Now this, um, I'm gonna go back to um, Exhibit One. Can you see that, Mr. Moros? Yes, yes, I can. And this area here that is labeled as area claimed by adverse possession of Moros, 14 square feet. Yes. Is that area, um, the area that is fenced in that you described? Yes, sir. And Did you describe this area to Mr. Giuliano at all? Yes, yes, we did. We, we told him that on the back property lot, there's fences and, uh, and there should be, uh, you know, that needed, would need to be added to the uh, adverse possession drawing. How have you made use of this particular area since 1973? Yeah, that area has been, you know, part of the backyard and just used. It's been mowed and played on, and it's just part of the yard. Now, with respect um, to some of the other areas that are shown um, on Exhibit One, um, could you describe? Um, well, first, we'll discuss um, your use of um, of the garage. How would you use your garage since you moved there? Yeah, the garage was a great uh, thing, and uh, so yeah, we uh, we use it, you know, continuously. The, you know, the car was in there all went along, so that's one less thing to clean off. And we parked the cars there on it, you know, all winter off street parking and on and off in the summer. And the driveway, um, would you park in the driveway or not? Yes, yes, we would. Can you tell me this area next to the driveway, how you've used that area um, since 1973? Well, all right. Again, because the, uh, you know, the driveway is just about the same size of a car, you know, the, the garage was, you know, really tight for any car I ever had. And there's probably only a couple of feet from the door to the edge of the garage. So even just my door swing goes out further than the edge of the garage when I'm parked on the hot top. So just the fact that you'd have to swing the door open to get out, I, I always had to cut those bushes back so you could get the, the car door swing. So it was at least, you know, four and a half feet, you know, past the uh, driveway edge, just so that you could open the door, get out and walk out. And uh, it wasn't really lawn there as much as it was scrub bush, scrub <laughs> brush under the bushes in the beginning. Eventually, you know, I planted a little grass and tried, you know, I, I actually tried at one point in time putting stone there, but the stone, the, the, the brush just grew through it. So I tried to, you know, eventually in the 90s, I uh, grass seeded it. Um, but yeah, we used it constantly. We, we, there was cars in, in the driveway all went along and, um, and in the summer occasionally. And, and again, in the summer, we have canoes and, and would, you know, leave them in the uh, upper in that area where the door would open up, you know, cradled in the, uh, in this, you know, the, where the grassy area is up against the bushes and keep the canoe there occasionally. Okay. So we'll, we'll go objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? I, I think the question called for specific answers, but if a narrative is okay uh, in this without, without having him address specific questions, um, it might clear the record if he addressed specific questions as to his use, 
rather than a narrative of his use just for going forward, Your Honor? Um, so I'll overrule it with respect to this answer, but I will caution Attorney Krenitsky. Let's, let, let's keep the questions narrow and we'll get to all the various uses and so forth. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at any time, Mr. Rose, did you ask anyone for permission to use this area next to your driveway? No. At any time, did you ask anyone for permission to use any of the areas shown on this plan as your, or, or shown on what you saw as exhibit three as the disputed adverse possession area? No. I was going to next show you what's been marked as exhibit four. Showing you a photograph, it's been marked as exhibit four. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this um, photograph, Joe? Well, this is an, an aerial photograph of the uh, Hardy Street, Flower Street area. And where I have the cursor, you recognize where I'm, this area that I'm pointing to? It, yes, sir, that's my house. And what is this in the back here? That would be the pool above ground round. So I think I need to... Thought I could move it. A little bit more of a... Whoops. Um, and this area behind the pool, what is, what is this here? Yes, that would be the uh, tree and bush line uh, at the rear, rear property line of my property. That's what you described when you just described that area earlier? Where I put up fence D, correct. Right, and you just said that you put up fence D in 1989, and this is a photo from 1980. So your fence wasn't up yet. For the correct. Um, and I'm gonna next show you what's been marked as exhibit seven. I'm sorry, that previous exhibit, Your Honor, was number four. four. Number four, thank you, Your Honor. And I thought I could, I thought I could rotate this, but I am not sure that I can. Say to before. Um, now, Exhibit Seven. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is a picture of my wife, probably in 1984. Uh, she's uh, trimming. Uh, well, I don't know. If she's much as trimming. She's she she was cutting uh, roses from the rose bush to put in a vase. And uh, so that's what uh, one of the uh, things that we did with the plantings. Now, how do you know the picture was from 1984? Yeah, we have uh, photo albums that I tried to keep the photos as I got them into a book. And so each photo album has a date. So this came out of the 1984 book. How many photo albums do you have? Uh, probably around 50. And um, do you know who took this photo? I did. And um, the rose bushes that, well, could you please describe where uh, your wife is standing here specifically? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that she's standing uh, on the, uh, the fence that goes from the garage to the rear lot line facing the river. She would be facing the river. 
and these bushes would be more towards the, uh, the, the you know, the center to the rear of the fence. The gate would probably be up on the right somewhere. And there's a little bird feeder there. I can't remember. We've had so many, I can't remember whereabouts they were, but uh, yeah. Do you know who planted these? Well, first, do you know what type of uh, vegetation this is that she's? Well, these are roses, yes. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, Janet and I planted these, you know, way back when we moved in. Did you plant them? Uh, where did you plant them? Well, we planted those on the, uh, well, when you go through the gate to the left, they were on the left side and uh, that's where they were. The left side of the gate towards the rear of the property. And what did you do to these rose bushes after you had planted them when you moved yeah. into the property? They, uh, we, we maintained them. They, they, uh, they grow pro prolifically and they sprawl and, uh, it was a constant uh, job of maintenance. As you can see, they, they, the, 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 they're pretty tall in this picture, but eventually everything was trimmed and cut back to, uh, to manicured uh, length. I'm gonna show you next what's been marked as exhibit eight. Okay. You recognize this um, exhibit? Yes, this is the uh, picture of the uh, backyard at the garden. Uh, so you can see the garage, the garden behind the garage, and the fence, and the, uh, the and the bushes on the other side of the fence. Um, now, who is in this photo? The uh, my wife and my daughter. So I'm pointing to someone here. Who is this? That would be Janet, my wife. Who is this here? Yes, my oldest daughter, Marnie. And who is this here? The youngest one, Heather. Um, and how old are your daughters um, in, in this picture? Do you know? In 1984, I think this was, uh, they were 12 and 9. How old are they today? Uh, 48 and 45. Um, now, do you know who took this picture? I did. Now, this area, you, you think you described this as the garden. Um, Correct. Did you install this garden in your in behind the garage? Yeah, that was probably, uh, you know, the same, you know, year, 70, 75, 76, 77. It was pretty much, pretty much when we moved in, but it's been there. Is the garden still there? Uh, it's, it's, it's morphed over the years. It, it, that, that's a flat, you know, probably 20 by 25 garden. And now we use a raised garden. We, we, we didn't have a garden for a few years. And, uh, then we started a raised garden in certain sections. So I, I just want to make, make sure I understand this garden is within that area that you've now stipulated to correct it's not in what we're not right. in okay there's no dispute that the, the garden is within the stipulated area okay that's fine it doesn't mean you can't ask questions about it i just wanted to be clear now the, the vegetation that i'm pointing to here yes what is that yeah those are the rose bushes that were planted to the left of the, the gate. And uh, and the gate is pretty much where Janet is at the end of the garden now. And is it where I have the cursor now? Yes, in, in that general location, yeah. Is that where the gate still is? Yes. Is that the fence that you described installing in 1975? That yes. That's behind the garage? Yes. Um, in, in this vegetation here, is that also the roses? Yes. How about up here? Those are roses as well. Um, and how would you maintain, you said you, you had to cut those roses. How would you maintain them? What would you physically do? Right, so 
would start on the fence side and, you know, once we had all our blooms and everything, we would cut them straight up and across and then would go through the gate and come around the other side and uh, get behind them and, and cut them so that they were pretty much just a, maybe a foot higher than the uh, actual fence. And we did that, you know, you go through the gate, we would trim to the left, trim to the right, all the way, you know, and you could walk through there from the, uh, from the gate beside, you know, on the other side of the fence and the bushes to, you know, to the, to the garage and to the out and just walk from the garage to the front of the driveway. So when you describe performing maintenance on the other side of the fence, it, it looks like it's, um, it's dense here. How, how would you do that? Yeah. Well, again, the path and all these pictures had I known I needed a picture of the path 40 years ago, but I, I can only attest that we can walk through the gate. There's an opening, you open the gate and there's a path going either way. Eventually we would, like I said, we would trim the bushes that on our side and then you could trim the bushes on that was sprawling out towards the field. And over the years, I mean, our bushes against the fence and the path, uh, between the fence and the path, stayed relatively, you know, the same three to four feet, uh, tapered down in the back where the rose bushes are because of the trees and up to the front where the, the you know, where the driveway was. And then would trim some of the, the back. I mean, so our bushes in, in this area could be from the from the path that you can't see to the fence, three to four feet, but the other side of the path would sprawl as, you know, to 10, 15, it could be a 20 foot wide sometimes. Now, the back corner here, uh, when you when we looked at chalk number one, you described fencing that you installed here. Right. In 1976, um, and in 1989. Uh, so this picture, um, the 76 fence, which joined the, well, why, why don't you describe this back corner again and, and what is here at the time of 1984 for fencing in this corner? It's the same fencing, nothing's changed back there. That fence that I put in, it goes to the end of the property line and it goes across the back and it, it's just there. It, uh, it, it's there. I am next going to show hold, you. Hold, hold on a second, Council. Sure. So I want to make sure I understand what you're saying about this path, right? So there's a path, you say, that ran parallel to the fence, and then you had bushes between the fence and the path, about three to four feet of bushes, correct? Yes, sir. And then you're saying, in addition, there were bushes on the north side of the path, and those are also shown in this picture. Yes, sir. And are these bushes you planted, or are they there? No, they were wild, as uh, and Mr. Scarano's uh, opening. All right, thank you. You may continue, Council. Thank you, Honor. Next, going to go to contested exhibit. Okay. You recognize this photograph? Yes, this is uh, my, again my backyard. Uh, it was in the fall of the same year, 84, which again shows the fence and the garden. Uh, yeah, we we're just cleaning out the garage, but that, I mean, the, the, the cellar, but that has nothing to do with it. So, yeah, you can see the fence. And as it goes down all the way to the back and then the rear fence, uh, which I put in and with the pickets facing the breed property, facing the breed property, the rails on the inside and it goes into the uh, bushes near the, the breed fence. So first I, I wanted to also ask you, who is this in the photograph? That, that, that was me. 1984. And, and who we're, all, we're all a little older than we used to be. Right? 
the glory days. Who, who else uh, is in this photograph? Yeah, these are a couple of guys from work who, uh, you know, were taking, uh, helping me uh, clean out the garage, uh, cellar. And do you know who took this photograph? Janet did. Okay, so when, when you described about the fence in the back here that you installed, the cross member is on the inside towards your backyard here, correct? Yes. Which is different than this section of the fence where the cross member is to the outside, right? Yes. Now, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit more here, and I'm going to ask about thought I could move us down here. There's a, um, I think I might need to just get that first. And I can... One second. You're just going to have to do your best with what's on the screen, Council. Thank you, Your Honor. This... No, I appreciate it. you can't move up and down. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I could. I was able to in our prior uh, Zoom call with my client. Okay. Um, there's a feature here that I'm pointing to. Uh, yes, that that would be a uh, metal fence post that rises up higher. So that's that's the opening of the gate is like two pickets over from that. So if I if I am that's the metal post is that right. sitting in the ground? Yes. And it extended to about the height that I have here on the screen. Yeah, about that. Okay, the top. So if you said is it you said two. Two pickets to the left, yes. This one, or so this that one? would be the gate. So the the second picket is the where the gate would uh, hinge, not hinge, latch onto that, and then the next four pickets would would be the ones that swing out. Now, can you describe the system you had to latch the gate, if any? Well, I I didn't know how to build a fence. So I, I kind of just saw what was, was there. And so I, I basically just put a, uh, you can see the two by four rail behind the pickets. I put a piece of uh, metal underneath the uh, picket. Uh, no, underneath the rail of where the, uh, where the fence post is. And then on the top rail and the bottom rail. So that when, uh, you know, the other two by four for the gate would would rest on that. So it would just still look like the two by four was in line. And basically to open it, there was no latch. It just rested very heavily. And so you lift and push and it opens. And that's pretty much it. That so that was the latching system, lift and push. And to close, you'd pull, you'd lift and pull and drop and it would shut. And that's still the system, it's still the same today? Yes, sir. Um, Your Honor, I'd move to admit contested exhibit K into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. All right, so K is, will be admitted as exhibit 111. wanted to show you what's been marked as contested exhibit G. Say G? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Morris, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. What is this? 
Yeah, this is a picture of my wife, Janet, in the path that can't be seen, uh, trimming the uh, the bushes uh, on the uh, riverside of the uh, of the path. Her back is towards the uh, our, our property. So basically, yeah, again, you can't see the objection. path because I, I again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Richard, what's the objection? He asked and answered the question, Your Honor. Yeah. Is there another question? No, that's that, that's sustained. So Mr. Morose, just um, your, your attorney will ask a lot of questions. You can just answer what he asks and then he'll ask you another one. Yes, sir. Do you know when this picture was taken, Mr. Morose? I believe it was a, it was either 1984, or 1988. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Either one of those years. And do you know who um, took this photo? Yes, uh, I did. And you, where were you standing when you took this photo? I, I think I was up on the deck by the pool. And what is this? Body of water beyond. Um, that's the uh, Porter River. That uh, that's at the end of Hardy Street. And uh, the. Um, the, this vegetation that she's trimming that appears to be, do you know what this is? They, they, they seem to be roses and there was other some other plant that kind of had white things. I don't know what they were, but yeah, the roses and scrub brush back there. And would you from your home and your deck have views to the Porter River at this time? Yes. Were there times when you didn't have views because the of the height of the vegetation or the any other reason? Right. Sometimes, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move to admit contested Exhibit G into evidence. Council, but I would object to Exhibit D, Your Honor, in that he may have identified a photograph, but he can't identify the time frame. Um, and certainly um, the distance from the photo, if he took it from his deck, is deceiving. Um, it doesn't la lend any perspective from the fence to the, to the person in the photograph. Um, and it shows it would appear a hedge clip is in the photograph, but those photographs, um, he's identified two different types of flowers, uh, and I don't think he knows what types of flowers they are. So what I would object to the admission of this exhibit. Okay. Um, overruled. Contested Jews admitted as Exhibit 112. Thank you, Your Honor. We're also showing you what's been marked as contested exhibit F. You recognize it? Yes. What is this? Uh, that's me trimming a tree, risking life and limb. Now, where are you located? Where is this tree located that you're trimming? Uh, this is on the rear line of the property near where the uh, 14 square foot area is so that that's growing between the breed fence and my rear fence so this this is not in the adverse possession area that you claim correct no it is not do you know um when this photograph was taken yeah, this one was taken in 1988 you know who took this photograph janet did was she yelling at you to get off the fence, get off the ladder at that time? Yes, sir. I'm not surprised. Is, is that your ladder that you're using? Yes, sir. And um, 
was this regular maintenance you would do um, at your property and around your property at this time? Yes. Did, can you describe, uh, well, did you ever use this ladder in the, to, to trim particular areas within the um, disputed adverse possession area? Objection, he's leading the witness. Um, well, he has been, but this one actually isn't leading because he can answer. Him <laughs> so that, that's overruled. But uh, Attorney Kranitsky, leading doesn't make it go faster, despite what all you lawyers think. So keep that in mind. All right, thank you. Mr. Morose, where would you use this ladder on your pro at, at all, anywhere? Yeah, so I, I would use this on, on the, the trees that were on the uh, riverside of the uh, fenced area by the garden. And uh, I actually used it to put a swing up over there once and I, I put one of them tree faces up on the, uh, the trees that are in the, near the uh, adverse possession area. How often would you um, trim the trees? Uh, yeah. If at all. In the yeah, in the beginning, I used to be very vigilant to 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 trim them and keep them down, and uh, you know, again around the uh, '90s and 2000s, I I got lazy. Everything let go, but I I, I have to trim those all the time just because they hang over the pool, and I have to. Even though they're big and tall, I still have to trim, trim, trim. When did you start um, trimming trees on your on your property? Yeah, probably in the uh, 80s, you know, once uh, in the 1980s. And did that include trees within the adverse possession area? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Um, He's leading the witness. Uh, Your Honor, I'd, I'd move to admit contested exhibit F into evidence. I would allow it with the stipulation that no one from safety ever sees it. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, all right, exhibit F is admitted as exhibit 113. Morris, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 9. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. Do you know who took this photograph? I did. Do you know when you took this photograph? Uh, 1989. Why did you take this photograph? Yeah. Well, I took this because uh, eventually we were going to put a dorm around the house, and I just wanted to get a shot of uh, what the house looked like. And so in, in doing so, you can see the, the fence from the other side. And uh... Objection, Your Honor. He asked and answered the question. Yeah, so. Your Honor, I, I, I froze and didn't hear any of the answer. I'm sorry, hold on. Well, I'm gonna strike the part about, you can see the fence. The question was just why you took it and I got that part. Okay. Well, it's stricken to me anyway. I froze and didn't hear any of the answer. So, okay. uh, Mr. Moroso, um, could you describe what you see in this photograph? Your Honor, if it would speed things up, I have no objection to admitting this. It's already an exhibit if he's going to... It's already admitted, but that's why you have exhibits, so you can examine people about them. Uh, okay, thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, counsel. Repeat the question. Can you describe what you see um, in this photograph as it relates to the adverse possession area? Okay, so I can see the tree that I uh, eventually cut down over there by the garage, which it's not that uh, huge at that point. And uh, I can see the bushes that kind of block some of the garage and the fence in that 
and and then at the end of the uh, picture to the right, you can see the you know my fence, the backside of it, and you can see right through. So it's it's just there. Now, um, first, I wanted to just ask you. You said the tree that you cut down. It, there, I see a couple of trees that are towards the the garage. Can I ask which tree? Is it the one that I'm pointing to here or the one, the second one? It's the second one, yeah. The other two trees to the left, as you pointed, those were actually in front of the uh, house, in front of the garage, front of the house. So this tree here is not in the adverse possession area. Is that a fair statement? That's, that's correct. It's on the other side of your driveway? Right. So this one here is, is um, you describe as a tree that you later cut down? Yes. Um, and I, I note that it appears there's snow on the ground here, correct? Yes. So it's, it's a winter photo? Yes. And is this, um, is, does this photo um, fairly represent how the vegetation looked in, the, in this adverse possession area? around this time? Yes. Objection. Objection, Your Honor. It's calling for speculation of the witness. Um, this is a one-time photograph. Um, I don't know what counsel is trying to get at, whether it represents winter scenes. It represents one winter scene. I think it, I'm going to sustain that. Attorney Korniski, you have to be a little more specific about period of representation. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so you, you testify that this was in 1989, this photograph. Right. And is there anything that you note that um, in this photograph, um, in your memory, is, was, was different prior to uh, this photograph during uh, prior winters? It's a compound question, Your Honor, if I may object. He's asking about different winters, different periods of time, it calls for a conclusion on a compound question. Overruled. You have the question, Mr. Moros? Can you answer, Mr. Moros? Oh, uh, yes. I mean, typically, like in, in 1989, you know, this winter scene would be typical for, you know, and, and again, the tree heights, that tree that I had cut by the garage is very, very tall. And the other trees in the adverse possession area aren't that big at this time in 1989. When you describe but, the trees, you're talking about this one here, is that within the area? Yes. Well, I, I don't know if that particular tree is in the area, but that's where, yeah. Yes. There's three or four trees there. That is the tree line that we were working to, yes. Objection. Move to strike, non-responsive. Um, the statement that is the tree line we were working to struck. Ms. Moros, earlier you described um, a tree line. Could you, does this photo show the tree line you were referring to? Yes. And is it to the area where I have the cursor now? Yes. And earlier you also described a line of, um, of other um, plantings or brush. Is this area here, that line? Yes. Okay. Showing you what's been marked as contested exhibit AA. You recognize this photograph? Yes. Do you know who took this picture? Yeah, I did. Do you know when you took this picture? It was 1988. And who is in this photograph? Who is this here? Yeah, that would be my wife. And who is this here? And this, my daughter, Heather. And um, 
what is this in your in this photograph? Yeah, this is the my canoe. And do you know when you got the canoe? I bought the canoe in like 1981, 82. What is this post here that I see in the photograph? Yeah, that's that's the basketball net we installed. When did you install that? Yeah, probably the mid 80s, 84, 85. And that's not, is this within the adverse possession area? No, it is not. Um, now, this area here, how would you describe ne next to your driveway at the time? How would you describe it? Yeah, this is the area where, again, we would park the car and, and you know, you couldn't open the door without those uh, trees being, you know, the bushes being trimmed back at least, you know, s several feet. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that, uh, so, so th this is the bush line that would go and there's a little space between the, the garage and that bush where you could, you know, walk and get into that Objection. path. That, oh. um, uh, no, I understand the objection. I think we can stop here, Mr. Morales. Um, I got, the, I think you've answered the question. Mr. Morales, do you know the distance from your driveway to the basketball pole? Probably about 15 to 20 feet, approximately. Um, Your Honor, I would move to admit contested exhibit AA into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. Um, okay, so A is admitted as exhibit 114. Can I ask a question about AA? I'm sorry, would you put it back up? 114 now. The, um, there's like a structure in that tree that's got the rocks around it. You see it's a wall or something. I don't know what it is. What Wait, is that? Yeah, That there. would be the front fence, Your Honor. Oh, front fence, okay. Yes. So the garage is sort of in between, you see a bit of the garage in between the fence and the tree. Shall yes, you? sir. Okay, you may proceed, Attorney Kulinski. Thank you. I was wondering if we could take a break, Your Honor. Um, yeah, this is for, a good for, time. for one more. Absolutely. Let's come back about 1130. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. How do we do that?
Hello. You can unmute yourself, Mr. Morose. You're muted if, if you choose to. Leah, it's not letting my video start. Oh, no. Now I can. Okay. Hmm. Are we ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Great. You may proceed, Attorney Kornitsky. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Morose, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 11. Can you see that on your screen? Yes, sir. What is shown in this photograph? Uh, uh, my garage and the construction equipment. This was uh, in 1990 when uh, the, uh, the sewage uh, came through the street. And <clears throat> what, uh, is, what is this feature here that I can see that I'm pointing to? That would be the basketball net. And this shows um, how long did the construction last for this sewer easement on, on the street? It, it, it seemed like years because they started, you know, up further up the street. They had to come across the front of our house all the way to the end of the street. And so it was several months. And at this time, did you uh, do anything in the area next to the driveway? No, with, with all the activity going on, I, I didn't uh, do too much trim back there. And I see there's um, some type of structure or something located here. Do you know what this is? That's part of the construction sewer. That's one of the manhole bases, I guess. And do you know how long that was on that in that location for? Uh, probably several weeks. I'm just going to show you exhibit 10. You recognize this photograph? Yes. And what is this? this photo? Yeah. What does this photo show? Yes, this photo is uh, a few days after the other photo. They've, now they've dug up the street across the front of my drive, driveway and garage. And it looks like they turned the uh, basketball net around because it was in their way. They, they did eventually just remove it. And uh, that's basically what's going on here. And this um, photo shows- and They could remove that because you built it inside the road layout? The, Your Honor, I'm not sure if I, are you asking about the- um, Yeah, the, the basketball. basketball. You say they eventually removed the basketball net. Is that partly because it was built within the Harding Street layout? I think it was because it was in the way of their construction. Okay. Did it, was it reinstalled at any point? No, no, we didn't reinstall it. And this, um, this is the front fence that was, you talked about earlier? Yes, sir. And in the back here, you can see there's um, um, some tall vegetation. Could you describe this? Yes, that's basically the tree line that goes along to the rear of the property and uh, yeah, it's very thick vegetation, yes.
Next and ask about Exhibit 15. Um, do you recognize this document? Yes. What is this? Yeah, this is a, an a and that apparently, I don't know if the breeds uh, filed this and uh, it, it, it just shows that it was, a, it was approved, an a and approved by the Danvers Planning Board. And this lot here, you recognize this? Yes, that is my lot. And what is this here? That's my garage. And what is this lot referred to? And this is uh, Welch or Stickney. And this shows that sewer easement? Yes. Did you, um, are you aware, were you aware at the time in 1999 of the Danvers Planning Board having a hearing on this ANR plan? No. When did you become aware of uh, the meeting and this action? A few months after. Did you receive notice of the planning board hearing? No, no, no notice. Well, no, not that I recall, no. I just want to note, uh, actually, that um, consideration of an A&R plan does not require a public hearing. Right. It was a public meeting. It wasn't a public hearing. You can use the word hearing generically, but I want to make clear this wasn't going to be a public hearing if it was just to consider an A&R plan. Right. I, I just wanted to make sure of the question that he did not receive any notice. Right. And I have a question. I'm not clear. What what was was the lot labeled now or formerly Welcher Stickney? Was that the new lot created by the ANR plan? My my understanding is the lot line changed, that it, it was reconfiguring the, the thirty-one thousand six hundred, but I, I I'm I'm not 100% sure about that, Your Honor. I, yeah. I know they show the lot on this plan. Okay. Your Honor, if I, if I may, I know yeah. that at some point there was merger um, considered, um, and this is when the title issue came up, and shortly thereafter, the adverse possession case was filed by the successor to Breed. All right, so we'll, we'll so we'll probably hear more about that later. I think you will, Your Honor. All right, so this is just a discussion; it's not evidence, and we'll uh, you can continue, Attorney Kornitsky. Thank you, Your Honor. So, when did you first learn of the encroachment of your garage and the issue of the lot line? A few months after this. Uh, after this uh, meeting. How did you become aware? Uh, we're at the town hall uh, asking about something and, and, and they showed us and we, we found it somehow. You found a, a copy of a plan? Yes, a copy of this plan. And what did you do after that discovery? Well, well we, we contacted a lawyer, had a consult Did you do any, did you take any other action? Um, to, um, well, and, and we did, uh, you know, we, we hired a uh, uh, surveyor to survey and came up with the same uh, issue. And who was the lawyer you contacted? That was uh, Lenny Femino in Beverly. Did you engage his firm? We didn't engage his firm. We uh, figured we had adverse uh, possession, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I forget the terms, uh, a perfected adverse possession claim. So we 
we, we didn't do nothing. Next, going to show you what's been marked as contested exhibit W. What does this photograph show? Yes, this is Rather, the, uh, Mr. Morose. First, I could say, do you recognize this photograph? Yes, yes, I do. You know who took this photograph? I did. You know when you took this photograph? Probably 2000, 2001 or two. And what does this photograph show? Well, this basically shows, well, I had just put some new pickets up and uh, it shows the, uh, that's the area where the 14 square feet is. The uh, So that would be the fence that I, I, I've been maintaining. And this area here is what you, you said you had to replace pickets? Yes, I had to replace a few pickets. They were warped. What are these features hanging or installed here? Yeah, those are hooks. Uh, I used to hang the uh, marshmallow roasters up there. And the, um, the seats that are here? Yeah, it, you know, the lawn furniture, we have, you know, the furniture all over the place, the fire pits right there, so, yeah. You use the fire pit in this general, oh, is this the fire pit here? Correct, yes. And the um, the fencing that's shown here, um, the, not the new section, but this older, that, when did you install that fencing? Right, that was the one I installed in like 89. I, I mean, the fence was in there since 75. Objection. I um, added. Stop, stop. It's okay, Mr. Rose. Um, that's sustained. May continue, Attorney Kranitsky. Um, Your Honor, I'd move to admit contested exhibit W into evidence. Attorney, uh, Attorney Scarano. Your Honor, I would object to W being entered um, while it's been described um, as offense there's no indication that it contains the 14 square feet. And there's been no foundation as to that fact. Overruled, um, W is admitted as exhibit 115. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Morosa, I'm next gonna show you what's been marked as exhibit 12. You recognize this exhibit? Yes. And what is this? Um, what do you understand this exhibit to, to be? I, I understand this to be a, uh, a special permit to run a, a business that's 1517 Florence Street. And it, it says here that it was the Board of Appeals. Do you understand that this was from the Danvers Board of Appeals? Yes. And did you attend any meetings um, relative to this decision? Yes. You know if your wife attended meetings? Yes. And do you know what the um, what these this decision and the meetings concerned? It was basically about a special permit in a residential area to make sure that uh, the, there was certain restrictions because it is in a residential area. Do you know what property um, this Board of Appeals decision concerned? Uh, it was 15 to 17 Florence Street as uh, on the address.
And what property is 1517 Florence Street? Mr. Is that Burrell. the one directly to the rear that's owned by the defendants? Are you asking the witness or? I am, I'm asking, yes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the 15 to 17 Florence Street is the, uh, is that building that was behind the fence we were just looking at, that's the Florence Street. Uh, their, their properties abut the back of Hardy Street. All right, thank you. Going back to what has now been marked as Exhibit 115, is what is this, these two windows in this brick building here? Yes, that would be 15 to 17 Florence Street. Thank you. Thank you. And just one last question about Exhibit 12. Um, in that petition in 2000, that was brought by um, Mr. Fitch and Mr. and Mrs. Capuccio. Is that your understanding? Yes. You understand who was going to operate a uh, who is um, going to operate a business pursuant to this proposed or granted special permit? Yes. Who was that? That was Paul Fitch. Did you, at that time, had you met Mr. Fitch? I, I, did, I think we, you know, saw each other at the meetings. I, I, we may have just said hi. I don't remember any discussions. And had you met, met uh, Mr. Capuccio? Yes. Um, directing your attention to contested exhibit I, um, you recognize this photograph? Yes. What, do you, what can you tell me about this photograph? Yeah, well, that's me in the pool with my grandson. He's about one, so this would be a 20, photo was taken in 2004. And uh, it shows the, that was one of the years we didn't have a garden. <laughs> you can see grass back there, up against the uh, garage. Priorities change when you got grandkids. And the fence, again, is, is manicured at that time. It's the middle of... All right. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's get some questions here, please. Tell me about um, this area here that I'm pointing to, the fence at that time. Yes, yeah, so that would be the fence um, that I uh, put in 1975 and been maintaining ever since. So this is about 30 years after you put that fence in? Yes. And tell me about the vegetation on the other side of the fence at this time. Yeah, the vegetation looks uh, manicured, cut, and, and neat. Your Honor, I move to admit contested exhibit I into evidence. No objection. Okay, I is admitted as exhibit 116. Now, um, Mr. Morose, um, at some point in time, did you cut down a tree within the adverse possession area? Yes. And do you know when that was? Uh, the spring of 2004. I'm showing you what's been marked as contested exhibit L. You recognize this photograph? Yes. Who took this photograph? I did. And do you know when you took this photograph? Uh, 2004, in the spring, right after the tree was cut. Is this the tree that you described cutting down? Yes. Um, 
I'm going to go back and ask some questions about that tree. But what is this um, this post here in the photograph? Describe that to me. Yeah, that's a, that's an old tire full of cement with a four by four in it. I yeah. kind of use those to hold the bushes back in certain areas. Can you describe how you would hold the bushes back? Uh, I just, I would put that up against the bush. There's another one off to the right and uh, just kind of, Sometimes I put a two by four across or maybe a rope, but I, I would just tie the bushes to hold them up and back. And this area that I'm pointing to here, what is this area? Yeah, this is the grassy area where that's where the bushes used to grow wild. And uh, I've, that, since the, uh, 1990 uh, construction that became a grassy knoll. So you planted a lawn by this point in time? I did. What, hold on, hold on. What construction in 1990 are you referring to? That would be the, uh, the uh, sewer construction when they came through. Okay. Thank you. So specifically when, how long after the sewer construction did you plant the lawn here? Probably within the year. I think uh, they were done in the winter. It was probably the spring of uh, 91, 92. And uh, can you describe this open area here? Yes, it's it's pretty far off the uh, adverse possession that I'm claiming, but basically, the th that path went through the brush that, as Attorney Scarano said, it was a big buffer. It was almost 25 to 30 feet. That's how long that path is. So I um, kind of just you know, at the edge of the, the lawn that I was maintaining, I just kind of cut a swatch out to uh, get to the tree. So I want to ask you now about this tree. Um, the, um, where was the tree before it was cut down? Where specifically was it located? It was, and it was beside my garage, approximately eight to nine feet from the side of my garage. And did you have any conversations with anyone regarding um, cutting down the tree? Yes. Who did you have a conversation with? With, with Paul Fitch. When was that conversation? Uh, that was in the spring of 2004. How long before cutting down the tree did you have that conversation? I, I don't know if it was the same day or within the week. I, I don't remember. And where were you for that conversation? We were in the field. When you described the field, was it this open area here? Yes. And how did you come to meet with Mr. Fitch to have this conversation? Yeah. Yes, I I walked through the path. I, w I went over to his building. I don't know if he was out having a cigar or if I went to the door. I, I really don't remember. But uh, I just remember him, you know, asking him, uh, oh, telling him I was yeah. going to cut the tree down. Do you mind if I lay it into oh, the... I'm uh, sorry. Stop. Oh. Did I hear a, an objection? Attorney yes, Your Honor. He has a question in front of him. Where did he meet Paul Fitch? And he is now describing several different areas and it's really non-responsive to the question. Um, oh, well, I thought you were gonna tell him objectors can talking about the conversation because that's- Well, that, that's the second objection, Your Honor, is the, is the hearsay objection. Um, but 
right now we're just trying to focus on where it happened. Well, he's doing his best, and um, you can cross-examine him about that. So then, then, not overruled, and I think we can the parts about what he had the conversation about are struck as beyond the scope of the question. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Fitch, so I understand that you testified um, that you had a conversation with Mr. 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 Fitch. Um, yes. And I'm gonna ask you some specific questions about that conversation. So, so first, I just wanna confirm that you met with him in the field. Yes. And uh, would you describe it as you initiating the conversation? Yes. And was the conversation um, friendly in nature? Yes. What did you ask Mr. Fitch, if anything? I asked him if I could lay the tree down into the uh, field. And what did you respond? I believe Paul said something like, uh, you can cut the rest of them down if you'd like. And we joked, I said, no, one is fine. Why, um, why did you want to cut this tree down? Yeah, yeah, this tree was, you know, again, it was eight feet away from the garage and it was, it was high and overgrown and, and it had the, uh, there was some invasive uh, vines that were just entangled in there. It was like, I, I just wanted to clear that out. So I, that's why I cut it down. I would object to the answer, Your Honor. Why? Because subjective intent in the adverse possession area, why he goes in there, why he possesses it is irrelevant. And now we're getting into an area of subjective intent over the adverse possession area. He's asking him questions about his subjective intent. It's bringing an answer that is not related to adverse possession because his intent's irrelevant. So what I, I would object to the fact that anything that requires an intent answer would be relevant in this situation. All right, why don't we come to a sidebar, please? So we're going to go in a breakout room. You can leave that up there, probably. Okay. But you'll get an invitation to a breakout room, which you should join. Oh, here we are. Okay. Uh, I think we're all here. Attorney Kornitsky, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Back to my screen share. 
So, Mr. Morose, um, when, um, so after the conversation with um, Mr. Fitch, what did you do? I, uh, I had the tree cut down and I uh, dismantled it and got it out of the field as quick as I could within a week. Um, who, um, who, would, who actually cut the tree down? Was it you or someone else? It was someone else I can't remember. And then who cut the tree up? I did. What did you do when you cut the tree up? What did you do with the with the wood? Some of the wood I put in the yard for my fire pit. Uh, some of the wood I piled up near the bushes, and some I put up near the street because uh, sometimes people drive by and they just grab wood. So that's where I stacked it. it wasn't that much. So with respect, um, well, actually, I think that's fine. So how long did the conversation with Mr. Fitch last? Minutes, one or two minutes. And would you, how often before that had you spoken with Mr. Fitch? Uh, not really that often, though. Would you see Mr. Fitch um, in the field or elsewhere around the property? Well, uh, like I said, sometimes he would, you know, he'd be mowing the lawn out in the field or uh, having a cigar out back. Or other than that, no. Did you ever see him in the area you claim by adverse possession? No. Did you ever see anyone who works with for him uh, in the area you claim by adverse possession? No. Your Honor, I would move to admit contested exhibit L into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. Okay. Um, L is admitted as exhibit 117. Morose, I'm showing you what's been marked as contested exhibit P. Do you recognize this? Yes. P? E? P is in Paul. Okay. Can you tell me what this photograph shows? Uh, this just shows the garage with the tree not there anymore. Now, um, who took this photo? I did. And who was this in the photo? That would be my granddaughter. Do you know the time that you took this photo? Uh, it would have been, uh, again, the uh, spring of uh, 2004. And um, at this point in time, were there any changes made here to your home? Well, that dormer was put up in 1990, 89 or 90, I, I don't remember. So well before this photo. Yes. Um, and what do you, what can you tell me about the vegetation in the area you claim by adverse possession that's shown in this photograph at this time? That it, it, it's clear enough that you can see the garage and you can see the backside of the fence. Now, I wanted to ask you about maintenance that you did to this section of the fence, if any, um, or you did describe maintaining the fence. Uh, which side of the fence would you perform maintenance on in this specific area behind the garage from here to the, to the end? Yeah. Well, one, one maintenance 
I did was cut some of the metal posts. So I would do that from the backside and any anything that I needed to reach from the backside, I'd go to the backside to repair. Pickets could be done on the front side. What do you mean by the backside? You mean the side away from your property? The yes, side? yes, sir. Oh, the the side on where the path would be. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The path side. Your Honor, I would move to admit ex contested exhibit P into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. Okay, P is uh, exhibit 118. I'm well, next showing you what's been marked as exhibit 103. Mr. do you see this? Yes. Image? You understand that this, what this exhibit is? Yes, Google Earth 2008. And does it show, um, is this your property here? Yes. This 20 Hardy Street? Yes. Is this your pool? Yes. Yeah. What is this area back here? That's my uh, rear fence area. That that's where the uh, fourteen square foot area is in the back. And um, this area here that I'm pointing to. What is this? Yes, area? that's beside the the driveway, the grass area. And does it show? Can you see what this is here? There appears to be a path in that area, yes. And this, if this structure here, you know, this is the pitch property and building? Yes. I'm now showing you as the mark as exhibit 104. To show the generally the same area? Yes. And this is in 2009, correct? Yes. August 5th of 2009, it appears? Yes. And once again, your, your, your pool, it's open now, though, with this picture? Yes. And your garage? Garage. In this area here? Yes. What is this? Uh, that that may be the bench or a, the table of chairs. Speculation at oh, that oh, height. Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, I mean, I think the answer is is not sure, but he was asked to direct, so he didn't have to speculate. But he's not sure. Maybe the bench. We got it. Uh, Mr. Morose, I was I was asking just what this general area is here next to your driveway. That would be the grassy area beside the driveway. Does it appear there's something located on the grassy area? Yes. Again, it... objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation from the witness. Is that little thing relevant, Attorney Kornitsky? It's it's not. I was just going to ask if it appears there's something on the lawn. Let's move on if we can't recognize it. Let's go. Mr. Moros, I'm showing what's been marked as contested exhibit J. Do you recognize this? Yes. What is this? Do you know who took this photograph? I did. You know when? I, I believe this was probably in 2000, 2003. Yeah, I, I can't remember all the pictures. So, no, one second. Oh, 
you know what this is here in the photo? Yeah, that, that is the the uh, tire with the four by four in it. And what is this area here? That's the field. And do you know who um, cut this area here? I did. Objection, Your Honor. Just on clarification of cut, there's been testimony about mowing, which is sometimes used as cutting. How did you cut it, Mr. Moroz? Well, in the beginning, uh, there was a little overgrowth, but I, 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 I did just trim some of the rough brush and I just mowed the rough brush. It eventually just had half brush and half. You can kind of see there's not grass in the pathway. It's, it's just overgrowth. So I didn't like get out with clippers or anything. I just kind of ran it over with the lawnmower. Okay, thank you. Now this area here, is this contained within your claimed adverse possession area, this path that you were just described cutting? No, it is not. Did it lead to the area you claim by adverse possession? Well, yes, it's closer towards where I'm taking the picture from, yes. Your Honor, I would move to admit contested exhibit J into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. All right, J is admitted as exhibit 119. Morris, I'm showing you what's been marked as contested exhibit H. You recognize this photograph? Yes. You know who took this photograph? Yeah, I, my wife did, Janet. You know when she took this photograph? Uh, 2008, maybe. You're not, you're not sure what year it was? I'm not really sure. Um, is this you in the photograph? Yes. And the action you just described about how you would cut that path out there? Could you, well, could you tell me what you're doing in this photograph? Yeah, I'm just mowing through to the, to the field. The ad, yeah, I, I've mowed my area of lawn beside and I just made a little path to get to the field. And this bench that's shown in the photograph, can you tell me when, what you know about this bench? Yeah, yeah, we probably got those, you know, in probably the mid 2000s, you know, three or four, I don't know. And when you got it, what did you do with it? Yeah, we, we put it out there with sit and look out at the river sometimes. Um, it's facing in the opposite direction of the river though, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's because I'm, I'm mowing the lawn. So when I would be done, I'd put it back in the middle. So where in the where would you keep it in this photo when yeah. you weren't mowing the lawn? Uh, I would say like where the white lawn chairs are in front of those, about, you know, four or five feet in front of those. Yeah, right about there, yeah. Okay. But actually sometimes I think I put the chair in front there to block the Objection. path something. Okay. What's the question was asked and answered and he's continuing on a narrative, Your Honor. No, I think he's actually still answering it because he's- Oh, I'm sorry. It, there seemed to be a dramatic pause, Your Honor. I'm sorry. There was, but I think it's a continuation of his, I think it's answering the same question. Thank you. Overruled. Continue, Mr. Moroz. Again, we, you know, it was, it was, it was on the grass. We moved it around. Sometimes we put it to block the path. Sometimes we left it out, just depending on what we were doing at the time. Now I noticed that those tires with the cement and the post, I don't see them in this photograph. Objection, Your Honor. 
Um, I think he can ask about the tires, but he can't yeah, lead them right, right. to the dump. Thank you, Rana. Yeah, no, yeah that's sustained. Um, Mr. Morose, in this area, um, what can you tell me about these chairs that are stacked, if anything? Right, these chairs, these are the ones that the neighbors and we all use when we went to watch the fireworks, as uh, Attorney Scarano mentioned. Sometimes people would go through the path. Most times you could just walk down the street and, and, and to get to the field. But yeah, that's what the chairs were for. When and, and did you permit your neighbors to go across? Or what, what would you say to your neighbors, if anything, about going to the river? I, I, I would never say anything to anyone about walking through and going to the, the river. Your Honor, I move to admit contested exhibit H. I have absolutely no objection, Your Honor. All right, H is admitted as exhibit 120. Uh, Your Honor, may I go to sidebar for a moment? Sure. Um, all right, so we're going to recess until twelve forty and then pick it up. For about 15 20 minutes to lunch. We'll see you then. Hey, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks. Thank you.